Hi, this is Dr. Terry McCatton of West County Plastic Surgeons, Washington University in St. Louis. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about the types of questions one may consider when looking into breast augmentation surgery. So what types of questions may somebody want to ask their plastic surgeon? So for one, am I a good candidate? So what does that mean? Is this a situation where a patient is comfortable having breast implants, which are going to be either salt water or silicone filled prostheses that are placed underneath the breast tissue to augment the breast. A second question would be, is there any family history or strong genetic risk for developing breast cancer? Uh, this should be known prior to having uh, breast augmentation surgery in case um, a mammogram is required in case genetic testing is required just to make sure that um, it is safe to proceed. A third thing to consider is going to be the location of the incision which is placed uh, for breast augmentation. So there are a couple common incisions and some less common. The most common is to put the incision underneath the breast uh, right underneath the crease of the breast, and this is known as the inframammary fold incision. A second pretty common incision is underneath the areola. So the areola being the pigmented circular part around the nipple. So right along the perimeter of the areola is another fairly common place uh, through which breast implants can be placed. Less commonly are incisions that can be placed through the armpit or the axilla and in rare instances, uh, and less common nowadays, uh, it would be through the belly button or through some other approaches. Then another important question to um, ask the plastic surgeon is whether the implants should be placed above or below the chest muscle. So uh, to be clear about this, when people are talking about putting the breast implant underneath the chest muscle or the pectoral muscle, typically nowadays, the breast implant is not entirely under the pectoral muscle. The pectoral muscle typically attaches on the chest higher than where the lower crease of the breast is. And once somebody has breast implants, the lower crease of the breast is very often lowered. And so as a result, if the breast implant were to be placed entirely under the chest muscle, it would actually look too high. So when we're talking about putting the breast implant under the muscle, really we're talking about part of the breast implant, usually around two thirds of the implant that's actually under the chest muscle. And this would be compared to placing the breast implant above the chest muscle, which some people sometimes refer to as subglandular placement. As it turns out, there's actually an intervening layer between the breast gland and the muscle called the fascia. And more frequently these days, plastic surgeons are also placing breast implants underneath this fascia layer, and that's called subfascial breast augmentation. So all of these different techniques have their pros and cons. Placing the uh, breast implant above the muscle is typically a little bit less painful and there is less motion of the breast implant when somebody is active and flexing the pectoral muscles. But placing the implant above the muscle may also make the implant more visible, a potentially less natural in appearance, and also is often associated with a higher rate of thickened scar formation around the breast implant known as capsular contracture versus placing the uh, breast implant under the muscle, which can often soften the appearance of the upper part of the breast with the implant in position um, and may reduce that risk of capsular contracture. However, doing so may be a little bit more uncomfortable for a couple of days after surgery and there can be a little, little bit more motion of the breast implant with activity, which can be more noticeable, particularly in people that are really thin and potentially had very little breast tissue to begin with. Another consideration with breast implants is going to be the um, type of implant that's placed, whether that's a salt water filled breast implant or a breast implant that's filled with silicone. And then of course, the size of the implant, how much of volume. 
So there's different approaches in uh, terms of deciding upon that. This can include using different sizers, looking at photos online, and often there's also three-dimensional uh, imaging systems to simulate what the breast implant may look like on our patients. So I hope this was uh, valuable information when you're considering breast augmentation and the types of things you should be discussing with your plastic surgeon. Thank you.